Hello guys, welcome back to another video today with ARC Exotics and in this video what we're going to be doing is telling you guys about our lined day geckos. Now, we've done a few videos on these guys in the past and basically there was a whole catastrophe, they are a breeding pair, they had to be split up, blah blah blah, there's loads of videos before this if you want to go check it out, but basically today we're going to be telling you now how they've got on because um, a lot of people are asking how they're doing and stuff like that. So yeah, they're obviously still currently split up, but it's just, you know, it's what's best for the animal at the end of the day, and the other one was pretty worse for wear, and it definitely was more than just breeding behavior, it was pretty bad aggression. So yeah, we're just gonna be walking you through that, and showing you how they're doing, and the bioactive build on that tank there, which has got the female one in, male one in. They all look the same. So guys, this is Candy's tank. Now, I always get these two muddled up. This is Candy, and the boy on the other side is obviously called Kane. Now, this is the bioactive tank. This is the only one out of the two which is bioactive. And as you can see from the old video of me setting it up, it has grown like absolute crazy. So basically, we've lined the front with loads of sort of quite short plants, nothing that gets too high and overpowering. And then um, we've got a little bit of an offcut of a peace lily there, but that's doing quite well. We fitted it in there. But like I say, a few nice brightly coloured plants at the front, which I think look really, really cool. These are under UVB, a 5 watt heat bulb, and the Arcadia Jungle Dawn LED light. Now, I'm pretty happy with this. This is the first bioactive tank I've done, and I feel like for a first attempt, it's not come out too bad. And like I say, we've got the cork bark here with more plants in. I'm really bad with my plant names, but that should improve at some point. So a quick rundown of the tank. It is the standard Exoterra, the 30 by 30 by 45. Now on here for food, we have, well, obviously we have a little bowl of water because I always think you should have water. The ledge is from Gecko Pantry and the food is the Sticky Foot Gold from Arcadia. I'm pretty sort of new to trying this out, but they seem to absolutely enjoy it so far. And obviously they have a mix of crickets as well. Now, coming up above, we have the Exoterra canopy hood with the UVB in there. Ignore the temperature on that side, the left one, because that is actually for this tank here, which is Rolo. Just worry about that tank temp there. If we'll focus. Um, anyway, so we've got the UVB here, and obviously they're only a small lizard, but it's still very important to provide that. Over the back here, we've got the Arcadia Jungle Dawn LED bar, and on this last little spare gap here, we have a little Zoomed 5 watt or first 5 watt heat bulb, just a little one, just to make sure there is a basket spot for him or for her. And she does always sit back there on the log. Not that you can see it very well. But right back there, there is a log somewhere. Just there. And that is where the probe is as well. So we can monitor the temperature. And she'll sit back there quite a lot. And there she is there. Look, I didn't even notice. Now she really enjoys this plumb of the tank. As you can see here. Probably didn't even notice her. But um... She's there, just chilling. But again, if you sort of zoom away from that, she blends in so well that you don't even notice her. So, like I say, that is all we're running on the top. Three different heat sources or light sources, obviously, so that makes the tank look pretty light. Um, the jungle door makes the tank look light anyway, but let alone with the UVB and the heat bulb. So that basically covers the tank and now we're going to talk a little bit about the actual lizard itself and how it has settled in since we've got it. Now we've had these guys for about five months now and like I say they have settled well after they got separated and the reason for being separated was they were just fighting as you saw in the photo before this and it was just too much and it was just not breeding behaviour, it was more aggression. And I think I've put that basically down to the tank not being big enough for the two of them. So they've now got their own 30 by 30 by 45 each. And they're settling in really well. 
Now the female that you see here is really outgoing and really bold and sort of, you know, like like you can see in the video. And the male is actually really timid and shy. But since he's been in his own enclosure, he's coming out so much more and he's getting so much better. Now, this is actually only one of the very few clips I have of them eating crickets. Now, this is actually before the tank went fully bioactive. So this was shot on my iPhone and not my Canon. And obviously, he's not in a bioactive setup. But as you can see here, really interesting animals. They don't just eat the prey. They attack it. As you can see, he's got it there or she's got it there. And she's actually rubbing his head and his body against the cork bark to try and kill it. Like you can see, and I think they're such interesting little lizards. And it's just something really cool that you don't see very often. Or in fact, you see it on the opposite end of the spectrum with bigger things like tegus and stuff like that. And savannah monitors, which grab their prey items and start sort of pushing them into the corners of things like that. And instead it's coming from a tiny little lizard. But going back to the bioactive setup, this is her when she first settled into it. As you can see, straight away exploring and checking things out and again she's so much more confident than the male but that will just come with time as you can see everything has grown in a lot more now on the tank but later on in the video i will show you a clip of the male um, which i got really recently and the colors i got on him you wouldn't sort of believe so i'd do a comparison from how dark he was and how light he is and i'll show you that in a little bit but like I say, this is basically just talking about how well they're doing and how sort of outgoing they now are for such little lizards. You don't sort of think it. But yeah, so other than that, that basically covers the female, which is the more confident one out of the two. As you can see here, she's going pretty nuts, climbing up stuff. And she's just so inquisitive. I didn't want to scare him when I'd done the bioactive build because obviously I had to catch her out of the tank. But... I thought maybe she might hide for a week after I put her back. No, straight out, straight explore and straight away. No stopping her. Um, although I did lose her up this side of my wall, which was very scary because I know how quick they are. But luckily enough, I managed to get her back okay. But as you can see here, instantly exploring. And the little sort of way you can tell from if she's a female or a male is the big sacks underneath her neck. Now, I actually had a lot of help from JTV Reptile, so a massive thank you to him for that. We were sort of talking about it and debating it for a few weeks, but we have now decided that she is the female. As you can see there, they look pretty big and pretty sort of inflamed compared to the male, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, as you can see here, this is the male, and just look how well he is coloured up compared to when he was getting picked on. Big difference. So when it comes to feeding, what we normally do is go into the cricket tub and we'll put about 10 crickets of all different sizes. These are actually fourths, but there's a good size difference between them all, quite small, quite big. What we'll do, we'll put 10 into this tub here. This tub has the calcium in that the Lindagicus need to support bone growth and loads of other good things like that. And we'll shake it up. And then what we'll do, we'll take five out, put them into that tub and chuck them in. The remaining five in there will go into that tub and then go into the tank. So they'll have five each. So let's do that now. And just like that, we have ten crickets in the tub and they're in the calcium. So what we're going to do is pour the tub right down to the end. Just give them a gentle shake, not too hard because you want them to actually be alive when you put them in. Make sure they all get dusted so they're nice and white. And they are. Now they're ready to be divided and put into the gecko's tank. And then once you have them in the separate tub, obviously it all depends what you're feeding. But if it's line day geckos, make sure they're not near the glass because they will run down. This is the bioactive tank which we just talked about. Open the tub and just give them a little chuck in there. And then hopefully you'll hear your gecko go absolutely nuts in about five minutes. And also, this one decides to go right down to the front of the glass and poo down the side of it. And that is now a daily routine that we have to do to keep on top of the maintenance for him. So, thanks a lot. 
Now before we end the video, this is the male's tank. Now as you can see, he is much more scarce, hence why I am a little bit further away and trying to be a bit more sort of timid about things because as soon as he sees me, he will run. But you've got to look at just how much he has come on. Colours are absolutely perfect, doing really well, eating really well. But again, if I went up to the tank now, um, he would definitely run as soon as we come in the room and he's out you'll just hear him scurry away really quickly and he kind of lives behind them plants just what he's near now but like I say there we go just like that gone so now he's gone we can actually walk through his tank but there's nothing too fancy in here because it's not a bioactive tank it has just got the exact same light and overhead it hasn't got the jungle dawn because there is no live plant and it has an exoterra bracket with the exact same bulb in. Now with the actual tank itself, it's got the exact same ledge from Gecko Pantry, food and water, the exact same, a few bits of cork bark and some fake leaves. And the cool little idea what I've done here was stuck a coconut hide to the side of the tank and used it as a little cave. And he does actually go in there quite a bit, so that is a pretty good idea. I used some no more nails and stuck that to the side. But again, I want to turn this one into a bioactive tank as well. The only downside to doing that is meaning I need to now scare him, ruin his confidence and catch him for that to happen. So I'm kind of not in no rush to do it. But other than that, that basically covers the male. We've already covered the female. And we've covered our feeding routine. So that is pretty much it. So guys, basically that is the video in a whole. We've covered what we feed him and how we feed him because I know everyone does things different and a few of you have asked so I thought I'd show you. We've covered the girl in that tank, in the bioactive tank. We're not going to be talking too much about the actual bioactive tank itself, just the actual individual lizard. That will be a whole other video. And we've covered the male over on that side as well who, like I say, is definitely making progress which is good. But other than that, we definitely, in the end, done the right thing. Just because you bought them as a breed and pair, or a compatible pair, it doesn't mean that they will live together happily. Um, so that is something for you guys to be aware of as well. Make sure that that isn't the case, and just because they were listed as that, doesn't mean they are that. Um, whether I got mugged off or not by the people that sold them to me, or not. You know, it could have just been anything. It could have been they, you know, were transported and had a bit of a different personality etc like that but it's not nothing to you know think too much about has happened now and they're both happy and that is all that matters and they're both healthy which also is all that matters so other than that that is basically the update on the line day geckos so thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed the video and stay tuned for another one in a couple of days if you do want to see anything in specific then let me know and i'll cover it for you thanks for watching